everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The Neighborhood and Housing Program is now accepting applications for the paint, the city home repair, and the targeted minor home repair programs. The paint program provides free paint and supplies to qualifying homeowners who live in Kansas City, Missouri. Homeowners must complete an application to receive paint, primer, caulking, and other supplies to paint their home. The City Home Repair Program assists homeowners who cannot afford to make urgent home repairs. Eligible KCMO homeowners who need plumbing, electrical, furnace, ADA, and roofing work may apply for assistance from the City of Kansas City, Missouri's City Home Repair Program. The targeted minor home repairs, special Northeast, and Marlboro targeted programs assist homeowners who live in those targeted neighborhoods. Application forms for these programs are available at the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department's Housing and Community Development Division, which is on the 19th floor of City Hall. Or go online to kcmo.gov and search for Home Repair. Applications can also be requested by calling 816-513-3025. On Saturday, May 16th, Cycle in the City will transform a portion of Ward Parkway to a family-friendly Open Streets Festival from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. From the Meyer Circle Fountain to Gregory Boulevard, the event will feature a variety of free, family-friendly activities, including the opportunity to bike or walk, roll, stroll, jog, even play along one of Kansas City's most beautiful thoroughfares. Cycle in the City is sponsored by Bike KC and is free and open to all ages. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Courtney McCreary and I'm at Brush Creek Community Center. I'm going to tell you about our spring break camp. It's a lot of fun. During our spring break camp, we usually play in the gym for a few hours and we do basketball, volleyball, soccer, dodgeball, all sorts of fun sports. Then usually we do a reading time because it's only a week away from out of school and so we like to get them in the, in the mood still of of school and then we do an arts and crafts and since it was St. Patrick's Day this week we did a few themed arts and crafts for St. Patrick's Day and then we did a few other arts and crafts with watercolors and coffee filters and then we went swimming and we have a one hour swim lesson time and then a one hour free swim time so it got the kids accustomed to the pool and got them to do some swim lessons in the meantime and then on Friday, our last day, we're going to go on a field trip and we're going to go bowling instead of swimming. And hopefully the kids will have fun there too. Pizza will be provided and so will drinks. Hello, my name is Jordan Pembury. And are you going to ask the question? So what have you been doing this week in spring break camp, Jordan? A bunch of fun stuff. We've been playing basketball, kickball, soccer, and playing on computers, doing arts and crafts. Uh, just a bunch of fun stuff. And what was your favorite thing to do in spring break camp? Play basketball. Play mm -hmm. basketball? So mm -hmm. you're pretty good at basketball? You're the best player? Okay. Thanks a lot for talking with me, Mr. Jordan. Hi, my name is Davion Key. So, uh, Davion, what have you been doing this week in spring break camp? Well, we've been playing dodgeball, kickball. Um, basketball and we've been getting on computers and reading books uh, to keep our knowledge. I really like it here. You it's like fun. It here? It's fun. Good job. You making a lot of new friends? Yep. Hi, right, my name is Devontae Key. So Devontae, uh, what have you been doing this week in summer camp? I mean spring break camp? Uh, basketball, football, reading, arts and crafts. And yeah, that's it. And I'm the best at basketball by the way. <laughs> the other community centers that offer spring break camps are Kansas City North Community Center, Garrison Community Center, Greg Kleist Community Center, Westport Roanoke Community Center, and Marlboro Community Center. Make sure you check out those other community centers for their spring break camps and times also. And for other information, check out KansasCityParks.org. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department has added two new members to its crime-fighting stable. Their names are Rhett and Leader. 
The horses are now part of the KCPD Mounted Patrol. We visited the unit at Camp Lake of the Woods in Swope Park to see how the horses are adjusting to their new roles with KCPD. You'll notice Rhett as the tall and dark brown gelding and Leader is a bit shorter and lighter. They need to have a calm disposition to undergo the rigorous training they need to be ready for patrol. Sergeant Joey Roberts is the supervisor of KCPD's Mounted Patrol. We put them through a series of sensory obstacles, basically making them brave or giving them courage. Uh, horses are natural, uh, they're naturally a predatory animal, which makes them uh, high flight animals. They're basically scared of everything. And we've got to take that and turn them into being brave so that we can take them out on the street, uh, have them around people, scary stuff. And it, it all starts in the barn. And it's, it's really just about building courage into the horses. They need to stay in shape and be ready for any situation. They ride year-round and are monitored closely in extreme weather conditions. If it's not safe to go out, they don't travel. We're in situations where other motorists, they treat us like another vehicle. Uh, you know, so it, so it is dangerous. I mean, there's things that, you know, if, if something startles a horse, you know, even, you know, just a little bit, you know, the horse might move a little. So you've always got to be aware of your surroundings and obstacles and uh, to make sure that you don't put yourself and the horse in a compromising position. Taking care of Rhett and Leader and the other horses is a full-time job and it's expensive. It includes feeding, training equipment, upkeep of the facility, and medical expenses. There was a time before cars when law enforcement only used horses, which made contact and communication with the public easy. But probably one of the other things is the public relations aspect. It kind of makes officers more approachable when we're patrolling neighborhoods. You're a, you're a tower of police visibility, so it's an excellent crime deterrent. Um, you know, it, but it really it breaks down barriers in the community. It's kind of an icebreaker, so that uh, to kind of promote that, you know, community interaction. You know, people will come out of the house and talk to us. Uh, gives you kind of a better understanding of what crime problems are in the neighborhoods. When they appear in parades or anywhere in public, they attract the most attention. Horses are such majestic creatures. You know, everybody wants to come up and pet them, and just I think they're just fascinated by the animal which, you know, we're kind of, you know, people are more apt to come up and talk to the horse versus the officer, but it's, that's kind of what opens that line of communication for us to start talking to the community. The Mounted Patrol is a specialized operations unit of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. It came about in 2006, several years after a nonprofit group was formed. Eight officers and a sergeant are assigned to the division. Everybody that's in the unit now, that has came out here has zero riding experience when they came to the unit. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, everybody's got horse background. Everybody that's here now had zero riding ability when they, whenever they t came to the unit. Uh, you know, I can train officers to ride horses, but you can't teach somebody how to be a good cop. The not-for-profit 501c3 is called Friends of the KC Mounted Patrol. It accepts tax-deductible donations. For more information, visit kcmountedpatrol.org. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. This season's Jammin' at the Gem concert series concludes with Grammy-nominated singer and longtime Kansas City resident Marilyn May on May 23rd at 8 p.m. May will also receive the American Jazz Museum's 2015 Lifetime Achievement Award. May has appeared on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson more than 70 times, and she was asked to record Too Late Now by the Smithsonian Institute for its 20th Century Permanent Collection. Go to AmericanJazzMuseum.org for tickets and more information. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.